Marshal, I was just going to apply for a job. Sorry, son, but my deputy just went down there with all the men we need. Boys, get that man. I want him. Wait a minute. I'll get him. Watch this belt. Marshal, I guess you got me. But I wasn't mixed up in that gang. I was trying to help you. Why, oh, you darn fool, I know it. I just wanted to talk to you when you lit out. I got a job for you. You need fighting fires and other. Say, I've been looking for a fella that can shoot and ride like you for months. Think I'm going to let you get away? Hey, no sorry, Bob. Take a look at this. With that. Oh, nothing, maybe. Seems mighty funny to me that every time this gang organizes a rodeo, their own men win all the first prizes. When it begins to look like an outsider's going to win, get sick. Two or three has even died from it. You can't arrest him for that, Marshal. No, maybe not. 
But it's mighty peculiar that when these uh, outsiders fall off and them tough Bronx suffering from snake bite, eh, I tell you, it just ain't natural. What do you want me to do, get snake bit? No. Now, my idea is for you to trail over there and sign up for the rodeo. I'll come along after and do some private investigating while you work in with the gang. Of course, you don't have to know me when we get there. What do you say to that, son? Sounds great to me. When do we start? Right away. Fair enough. <laughs> this game is getting pretty hot for us. It's near time that the law figured out that something crooked with this whole rodeo business and starts investigating. Now, I've decided we'll make our next cleanup right here in Dalton and head for the border before something happens. We'll stick up the next stage from the mine, grab the rodeo receipts, and clear out. You're right, Spike. He acted mighty suspicious when that fella died over in Boulder. When do we start? Tomorrow. The lawyers will board the stage down at Sagebrush and give you boys a high sign that the money's aboard. For the woman passenger, the stage crew ain't liable to fight much anyhow. John Weston. Harry Weston? How do you do? Remember? I want you to paddle Weston over to the shortcut trail. The one that leads to Dalton. Save him a whole day's journey instead of going by the way of the desert. And give him a horse. I'll see if there's another cent for you. Sure thing. You better get going then right now. Right out there at the end of the corral. You can't get off of it. Then you go 14 miles straight through the mountains and drop you right out of the timber on the main stage road that leads to Dalton. Well, I'd be there. I bet he'd be mighty glad to see you. Yeah, I'll be glad to see him, too. Pardon me. Uh, do you mind if I sit on this side? Why, no, certainly not. It's quite all right.
got us out of a jam that time, stranger. Nice ride. You don't happen to be going to the Dalton Rodeo, do you? Yes, I am. Well, tie your horse on behind and ride in with us. Thanks, I'll do that. from the top of the ridge. And when I saw those men riding by, I thought I'd better come down and investigate. My distress signal? It was mine. I saw the men coming and wait for help. Well, that's a kind of an unusual place to expect help, wasn't it? I, uh, I, I saw you on the ridge. Oh, I see. Are you going to Dalton, ma'am? Yes. I'm Marjorie Carter. My father is Judge Carter, president of the Cavendish Bank in Dalton. I want you to meet him when we get there. You want to thank him, too. You see, the bank had a large shipment of money on this day. Yeah, there was about 50 of them after us. But this fellow from Utah comes along single-handed and knocks them all off the horses. I never seen such rides. Can you tell me where I'll find Weston? Just went in the bank there, Mr. Carter. Thank you. Oh, well, Miss Carter. Oh, this is Mr. Weston, the man who saved us from the bandit. Mr. Weston, my father, Judge Carter. Mighty fine piece of work, young man. I hope you're staying in Dalton. Yes, I'm going into the Rodale. That's fine. Drop into my office after you get settled. I'd like to have a talk with you. Thank you. I'd be glad to. can't blame me if poor men can take care of him. Right. Just outsmarted you, that's all. I don't like the looks of it. He came up behind us and took the boys off of their horses. He say he will enter the Rodel. We're going to have to take care of him. He's liable to spoil our plans. Hi, young man. Hello, Judge. Come in. Thank you. Miss Carter? How do you do? Sit down. As justice of the peace of this township, I've been doing a little investigating. And it appears to me that this Rodale gang ain't just exactly on the level. If it ain't, we're going to need all the good men we can get on the side of law and order. Oh, it would be mighty disastrous, son, if anything happened to this Rodale. Nearly all the money in this valley is tied up in it. So we've just got to keep it honest. You mean to say these people have tied up all the money in the valley on a proposition put on by outsiders? Yes, every cent. They think it'll bring people in prosperity to Dalton, and they're all mighty proud of this little valley. That's why I'm offering you the job of deputy sheriff. I figure that, that with a man like you representing us, they, they won't dare to pull any of their tricks. Well, I appreciate your confidence in me, Judge, but I couldn't accept. It would interfere with my plans. Plans? What plans? I, uh, my plans to enter the Rodale tomorrow. Oh, I see. Well, I'm sorry, young man. So am I, Judge. Good day, Miss Carter. Good day. I'm afraid I was talking to the wrong man. What? I think he's nice. <laughs>
Utah. He looks like a ringer to me. Yeah, we gotta do something about it. 
Now, I don't want to pull anything too rough unless we have to. Kent, you take the boys up to the cabin and Dolores and get them up there. Just work over in the jet. I'm not sure he'll be out of the running tomorrow. Uh, leave that to us. See what you can find out. I'll meet you in the saloon some mighty fine work yourself. Hold on. No thanks, I don't drink. Well, here's looking at you. Well, Weston, tomorrow's gonna be a big day. Now then, if you want to go in with us... this and he'll be plenty sober. Say, Sheriff, a gang just jumped me up at the Spanish woman's house. And I got a hunch that if you go up there, you can pick up some of the gang that were mixed up in that stagecoach holdup yesterday. Yeah? But well, you don't look to me like you've been in any fight. You don't get me out of here in no wild goose chase either. I'm staying right here to guard this money. Well, suit yourself. 
Oh, you talk. I got some prize money for you. A lot of money there, Judge. Yes, we're doing pretty well. Took in $8,000 today and expect more tomorrow. We'll have close to $30,000 in this bank by tomorrow night. $30,000? You're taking an awful chance, aren't you? I'm still guarding this bank, young fella. Oh, pardon me, Sheriff. Thanks, Judge. Hello, Miss Carter. Cross us up. Well, if he does, we can still give him the needle. We're clearing out after this hole, anyhow. How'd you make out, son? You had the right hunch, Marshal. This promoter Barton is the brains of the gang, all right. I placed that bet like you told me, and he made me a proposition to join the outfit. Did you accept? Sure, I accepted. He took me right in and introduced me to the rest of the gang. Met them all. 
Barton told me that he placed $2,000 bet on Cheyenne Kent for me. And that if I should lose the event that I was entered in, why, I'd stand to win $4,000. So I don't think we have much to worry about from them until I start winning. And then maybe it'll be too late for them to get organized. Well, I don't know, son. Strikes me you better be mighty careful. Remember what happened to them other fellas. This game's a tough bunch when somebody crosses them. I don't want to see you took down with snake bite. Did you, did you get anything out of that Spanish woman? No, she wouldn't talk much. She took me up to that shack on the hill and introduced me to Cheyenne Kent. She said he was her brother. But before I could get either one of them to spill anything, the whole gang jumped me, and I had to carve myself a fast walking stick. I didn't get you into this job to get yourself killed. You got any ideas how they work this snake bite proposition? Not yet, but figuring from past performances, they can't do much till that bronc riding. And that's one of the last events tomorrow. So I have until then to figure it out. And besides, it's going to take them some time to get wise that I'm not going to lose this Rodeo. Huh? Never forgive myself if anything happens to me. Ah, uh, nothing's gonna happen. Come on, let's turn in. That's a good idea. Tomorrow's a big day. give it to you today. You think you got it dope out? Well, I don't know for certain, but I got a good hunt. And you hadn't ought to take any chances. Well, that's the only way to get their dope on. Say, if you got that snake bite medicine. Sure. Hell with that. That's what I thought. Here, take this out there with the needle. Hey. What are you thinking about, son? Old timer, I think I got this thing figured out. Come on, I'm in a nice event. Next is the bulldogging, ladies and gentlemen. Watch closely. This is going to be good.
McGregor. Let her go. are in by now. I got to take them over and put them in the vault. All right, Dad. I'll be in later. Me, boys, it's all yours. Maybe I better just get into one over myself to make sure. Well, you find everything all right. He found the needle we planted for him, and now he's riding the bronc. We've got to get moving. We clean out the bank and get over the line. What about me? That's for you to figure out.
up your hand. Why, Sheriff, I... Robbery and murder, eh? Well, you didn't get away with it. I thought you acted kind of suspicious last night when you were looking over that money and trying to get me out of there. But, Sheriff, Save I... your breath, young fella. Just a minute, Sheriff. I'm a United States Marshal. That young fellow's working for me. We're after a gang of rodeo crooks, and you almost let the biggest one get away. Now I got an organized a posse and go after them. Got him red-handed. Yes, and that's not all. Here's enough evidence to send that gang up for murder. Whenever anyone interfered with their Rodale plans, they stuck one of these needles dipped in snake venom in the saddle. And if the man died, why, they couldn't prove anything on them. I know there was a mystery about this, Summers. But I cracky, it took you to figure it out. Well, you see, Miss Marjorie's like this. He had to play up to that gal so he could get in with the gang. Well, in that case, I'll, I'll have to forgive him. Say, young fella, how about that deputy sheriff job? Sorry, Judge, but I can't accept. They'd interfere with my plans. Plans? What are you planning now? Well, Dad, you see, he's promised to stay away from these beautiful senoritas, and we've got to plan our, our honeymoon. Well... Go on, Judge. 